Hey, Westside Church, welcome to another devotional as we uh, continue to go through the miracles of Jesus. And this one takes place, uh, well, it takes place in three of the Gospels, but I'm going to read it from Mark chapter 1. It says, That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch, so Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. This is coming on the heels of Jesus healing uh, Simon's mother-in-law. It's just exactly straight up the verse after when it comes to Mark chapter 1. Um, and always remember, in any of these stories, we're trying to get an understanding of exactly who Jesus is, which teaches us who God the Father is. It's not just about specifically each miracle and how he reached his hand out, but instead it's about taking bits of Jesus' character that we can understand from how he heals and who he heals and when he heals so that we can understand who our God the Father is. Um, and the biggest thing that is a takeaway for me is the end of this really short story. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. There's something really, really cool about how God works. Now, when he walks into the room, the dynamic changes. Uh, evil reacts in certain ways. In this case, demons react in certain ways by being held silent. I wonder if uh, when God comes into our lives and we encounter extreme amounts of evil or we're dealing with something, uh, I wonder if we would understand that when Jesus can enter the end of the equation, um, it's not like every single time all of our sicknesses and diseases go away. I'm not completely sure of um, why those things still exist. But I do know what that when the Spirit of God is present in a place, He can silence the voices of evil that would come against us and the destiny that He has for us. Now, um, my dad is one of 12 kids. He's the sixth of 12. Um, and his mom, we call Grandma Peg. Now, when Grandma Peg were to enter into a card game with one of us grandkids or some of her children, or she was to walk into a kitchen uh, when people were cooking or maybe she was about to cook. There was an understanding of who was entering into the room. There was an understanding of the presence of Grandma Pei. Uh, and I was just thinking about this the other night when me and my family were playing cards. She had this rule that when the cards were dealt, you didn't pick up each card as it was dealt to you and look at it and then add it to your hand. You had to wait till everything was dealt and then you picked it up. When Grandma Peg walked into the room, there was an understanding of how things work. There was an understanding of the unwritten rules that we had all come to understand. The same thing goes that when Jesus walks into our lives and when he walks into the room, these evil things have to be silenced. There's an order in which Jesus will operate, and that is that he is the ultimate authority. And it's evident right here in this story. So let's read it one more time again, and hopefully it'll encourage you. That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. We've got to bring the sick and the oppressed to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch, so Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, but because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. So remember, there is an order when Jesus walks into the room, and this should give us confidence as we go forward in our walk with Jesus that it's not always about us trying to show up and express our own willpower in the perfect way at the right moment, but instead it's that we carry Jesus. And when Jesus walks into a room, things always change.